Anjali Muchandani. Dr. Anjali Muchandani is a postdoctoral fellow in the water and energy efficiency in the water energy water and energy efficiency for the environment lab, excuse me, at Stanford University. Anjali will be joining University of New Mexico as an assistant professor in 2021. Her research involves global water waste and energy challenges by developing novel materials and physical chemical processes to improve resource sustainability. Two unique resource reservoirs she studies are the atmosphere, capturing drinking water from the atmosphere, and sewage sludge, recovering metals, nutrients, and energy. She received her PhD and MS in environmental engineering from Arizona State University and BS in civil engineering from University of California, Los Angeles. Welcome, Dr. Mulchandani. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Anjali Mulchandani, and today I'm going to be talking about atmospheric water cap a decentralized off-grid emergency water supply. Next slide. As Carletta mentioned, COVID-19 highlighted water challenges in rural and remote areas, in particular the Navajo Nation. Prior to the start of COVID, the EPA estimated that 40% of the Navajo Nation did not have access to running water and instead had to travel to wells. However, these wells can be contaminated by uranium or fecal matter. And COVID exacerbated this water crisis. And as now we need water for more than just drinking, we need it for sanitation and we need it to wash our hands. In times of emergency, one of the immediate solutions is to transport water by tanker trailer or cases of bottles. But this can be even more difficult and expensive during a pandemic. Therefore, there's a need to provide safe, clean water off the municipal water grid with the flexibility and safety of bottled water, but without the associated cost and waste. Next slide. So how do we get water during a pandemic? Typically, we think about our liquid water supplies like rivers, lakes, groundwater, but these sources can be inaccessible or contaminated. But there's another reservoir that we haven't talked about yet, and that's the atmosphere. And the atmosphere actually has six times more water than rivers, it's just stored as water vapor. And the great thing about the atmosphere is that it's universally present. We can access it anywhere and at any time. An atmospheric water capture was inspired by the name of desert beetle, which actually captures fog on its back to serve as its drinking water supply. Next slide. So how do we as humans and engineers capture water from the air if we're not the desert beetle? Well, we can use a technology called a desiccant. And you may be familiar with desiccants as the little white packet that you'll find in a shoebox or in your leather goods or even powdered food. Or if you work in a lab, you may use desiccants and a desiccator to keep your samples dry. And desiccants work by absorbing water vapor on the air to, onto its surface. And once a desiccant is saturated, it's exposed to heat, such as sunshine, to desorb that water vapor so it's close to saturation. Then we can cool, condense, and collect that water as a liquid. And desiccants are typically housed in a box as shown on the right. It's about a cubic meter in size, so the size of a U-Haul moving box. You can collect water by adsorbing, desorbing, and condensing. Next slide. So how do we as environmental engineers take our scientific understanding of desiccants and apply it to provide water to those in need? Well, we can apply tools in our arsenal, like geospatial informatic tools, atmospheric climactic tools, and even material science and engineering tools. In the upper left, I show relative humidity across the United States in the summertime. And the purple box shows that the Southwest is relatively arid with humidities between 10 and 50%. But this region has abundant sunshine, which can provide sufficient energy for water vapor desorption. We've been able to tailor make photothermal nano enabled desiccants specifically for use in regions at 40% humidity with abundant sunshine. These desiccants are superheaters. So similar to how you would park a black car outside in the sunshine, it'll superheat. So we can see in the graph at the bottom right that these desiccants will uptake water at 40% humidity and then quickly release that water when they're exposed to the sunshine. And we can cycle these materials back and forth to produce up to two and a half liters of water per meter squared. So this is enough for one or maybe even two people's drinking or sanitation supply. 
Imagine now if we can scale up and modularize these units to provide water at a household or even at a community scale. Next slide. So as environmental engineers, we're also curious about the quality of the water that's produced. Is it safe for use? Is it safe for us to drink? So here we show an example water quality profile for dissolved organic carbon. And you can see that the concentrations vary temporally throughout the year, depending on your local air quality. Therefore, the type and the level of treatment that's gonna be required, such as filtration or disinfection, is going to vary based on the location and the time of year that these systems are going to be operated. Next slide. So to conclude and talk about the convergence of atmospheric water capture and COVID-19, my take home message to you is that while we face challenges in the water sector, during pandemics, droughts, or other disasters, there are opportunities to leverage environmental engineering, atmospheric science, and material science and engineering for developing creative solutions to sustainably supply water to all in need. Next slide. And with that, I wanna say thank you for listening to my talk. If you are a student interested in working on these topics or a faculty or industry member interested in collaborating, please reach out to me at anjali.m at unm.edu. Thank you. Thank you.